Skeptical uh, Awards yeah, Committee that. Chair, past chair. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, Good thank you. Busy, busy. Yes, thank goodness. We are all blessed to be in an area where we were um, a, a necessary evil, <laughs> if I can put it that way. Exactly. Okay. Well, it is 12.02, and I know we still have people coming in, but I want to go on and get us started. Uh, if you read the bios and everything of the, um, the information that was going out, you know who we have today with us, but we're just so happy to have everyone here, and for all the visitors that are joining us today, we want to thank you for joining us, and for all of the NARI members, we also want to thank you for taking time out of your lunch to be here with us as well. So, this is going to be kind of a double whammy. The first part of this Lunch and Learn is going to be about how to put your, get your magazine or get your photos in magazines. Like what are they looking for? What kind of storylines are they looking for? And when they do, what is the photography supposed to look like? What kind of angles, what kind of backgrounds, whatever. So Gordon is going to go over that with us. Um, Gordon Gregory is with Gordon Gregory Photography here in Richmond. And then right behind that is Susan Morgan. She is the managing editor with Our Home Magazine and she's also with Richmond Magazine. So they're gonna back those stories up for us. And then Greg Hadley with Hadley Photography in Metro DC is gonna talk to us about the Cody photos. So when you're entering these projects that you're taking photos for that you hope to be in a magazine, you also will have the opportunity to enter those, those into um, the Cody Awards. and what exactly are the judges kind of looking for when you put those in? So thank you to our panel. I am gonna go ahead and turn it over to Gordon. Hey, Sherry. Um, thanks everybody for coming. And I really appreciate, appreciate uh, having everybody here. Uh, so uh, I really, I put this, this together for a similar organization of, that is for interior designers. And so the photography kind of shows um, a similar feel for what you need for um, if you're interested in publishing, uh, if you're interested in getting someone's attention for a design competition. Um, and I wanted to stress how different this kind of photography is from real estate photography. Um, because I feel like real estate photography is just has a different use uh, than publishing for a magazine or even getting into a contest. Um, so this first slide is, and you can see the, the straight lines in the picture. Um, it's not photographed at an angle uh, and it takes you right into the picture uh, and it stresses, um, the furniture, uh, the crown molding, and the, the fireplace, uh, and it, 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 I feel like it's a good picture of a redesigned kind of space uh, that's been updated. Um, and this was for an interior designer uh, named Janie Molster. And here's another picture of, you know, I love getting straight on angles. It works really well with text um, in magazines, uh, the straight lines. And I also think it lends itself to graphic design and it just appeals to your eye. Um, and then the next slide. So I feel like, um, you know, when you have these close up, closer up images, it has more of a feel. It has more of a, an attention grabbing feel. And you can see we styled these images also uh, by using props um, and the books and the flowers, you know, and the, the um, throw on the chair, it really helps to give the space a personal uh, feel, but it also shows, you know, the tile in, on the floor and the doors and the curtains and the fountain in the background. So you can, you can get all these, you can get these pictures 
and you don't have to show the whole entire room. Um, you don't have to have that wide angle lens for every single picture. Sometimes that works, but not all the time. Um, okay, Sherry. Um, and again, th these are, you know, tighter pictures than you normally see, but these are what, these are what interior, these are what designers or designers like to see. And I feel like people really respond to these kinds of pictures. I try to use the straight lines and, um, and I also, I love to style these pictures. You want to make it look like it's a lived in space. Um, you know, with the flowers and the fruit and all that stuff help, help people realize, you know, what it could look like with their things. Um, okay, keep going. And then these are, this is kind of a detail shot. This, this kind, these kinds of pictures really work well for magazines as well. Um, they like showing wide spaces, but then also showing tight spaces. It kind of adds more interest to the article. Um, so everything's not at the same distance. So you want some tight pictures as well um, to, to mix in with your wider shots. Um, and again, you don't have to show the entire room to, to really get someone's attention. Um, and here's two different pictures of the same room and you know, you, they both, I feel like they're both good pictures, but one is, would be probably more interesting for a mat. The one on the left would probably be more interesting for a magazine. Um, the one on the right, you know, it certainly shows more. I like, you know, I do like seeing the floor, um, but it's two different ways of shooting a picture, but still not showing the whole room. Um, you're just getting enough of the room to be able to, to see what's going on. Um, and you can see the reflection is more interesting in the straight on picture, as opposed to the angled picture where you're seeing the reflection of the door. So that, take those things into account as well, what you're seeing in the, in the reflection of mirrors also. Mm -hmm. But you can see we styled, you know, we, we did, we took time to bring things into the picture to make it more interesting, the flowers and such. And then, you know, you can also think about different angles that add visual interest instead of everything um, just shot from eye level kind of. Um, it's kind of neat to see, especially when you've got, you know, that stair runner and the floor on the right there and um, it, it really grabs you. Um, and then showing, looking down um, on the table on the right, you get to see the chair um, fabric and, and the uh, patina of the table. Um, and then some of the rug back there. So all those things add interest. Um, keep your eye moving around. That's one thing is, a major thing is, is visual interest. Um, so you, yeah, um, think about other angles too. So, and then here's another great straight on picture. Um, very graphic, um, which the magazines just love. Um, this is a square picture, so they can crop it how they want as well. Um, and it just really looks good with text over it. Um, so you got to think about that um, when you're shooting for magazines, how they can, where they can run text and that kind of thing. Um, and we did a lot of styling on this to add visual interest. Um, Okay, and here's a, so I shot, I think this is the one where I shot two pictures and I just wanted to show you the difference in 
editing. Um, this is a commercial project that I shot here in Richmond. And if you, so if you look how deep those shadows are, um, it's um, not great. So, and then the sky is a little blown out. So in the next slide, you can see how much better it looks with the shadows opened up and the sky a little darker. Um, so those are things that, you know, when you shoot a picture with your iPhone, um, you know, a professional photographer can certainly make the pictures look better by editing in Photoshop and maximizing those highlights and shadows. And this is just one, um, it's pretty minor, but you can go back and forth on this one and you'll see the, the big vase in the center there. In this first slide, it looks a little bit crooked, like it's leaning to the left. And so what I did, the designer asked me to straighten it. So I, I straightened it in Photoshop and those are the kind of things that you can do post that really matter um, to magazines and designers and those, um, you know, the, that it's, it's a minor thing, but it does help weird with um, your eye, something that you notice. Your eye notices more things than you realize. How did um, I lose you guys? Gosh. What's that? Sorry, Gordon. I just came. My my screen is gone. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. So this is um, several different pictures of the same image, and they're just different. Um, w as we go through these, you can see if you go back and forth. You know, there's the little dog, and also the inside looks a little dark. So we, I brighten. I use lighting, and so I brighten brighten the space up with my strobe light inside. And then the, the last one is the final image where I put everything together. So the inside is bright and we've got the little dog. Um, and people love dogs in pictures. I don't know if you guys realize, but it really like these days just, oh my gosh, people just really helps. And it, it adds a human element without having a, a person in the picture, you can still have some life. So if I would, if you have any cute dogs around, <laughs> definitely <laughs> try to get a picture with, with a dog is great. Um, people love that. And you can see, you know, this is a great picture for a builder as well. Uh, it shows a lot of, yeah, and you can see I straighten things out as well, um, straighten the lines. Um, so those are all important things. And that took a lot of time. We brought that table in. Uh, we brought that table outside and we set the table. We did a lot to style that picture. That took a long time. Um, so I noticed down in the chat, it looks like we've got, um, let me change, okay. Do you use multiple exposures? Do you use multiple exposures and paint with light or do you light and take a single image? So I, use, I do both. So I will use my strobe lights to balance the existing light to because it's hardly ever bright enough inside uh, to just uh, use the available light. Um, so I always end up using strobe, but I try not to make it overlit. Like I want it to look like it's natural light. So what I'll do is I'll shoot a basic exposure without the strobe to see where I am. And then I will place my strobes. And I usually use at least one up to four. Um, and then um, I'll light the space. And then what I do is I also take multiple exposures. So you have the strobe, plus you have brighter exposures and darker exposures, and you can put all those together to make the final picture. So you're always trying to balance 
that outside light with the inside light. Um, there's a huge difference in the, in the window, in the window light, especially if you want to see the views outside, uh, you really have to shoot a darker one and I have to cut that window out and put it into the, the final picture. Um, Cause it's just, it's, your eye sees much more light than your, than the camera does. It can see that difference, but you can't, the camera just can't see that, that wide, uh, variety uh, that wide a spectrum of light awesome. um so that's all about all i've got but i can certainly add more uh as susan goes through what she has to say okay and um if you have any questions thank you taylor for putting it in the chat room if you have anything that you'd like to ask any of our panel please feel free to put it in there if we don't see it in the beginning we'll be sure to grab it when we wrap up. So I'm going to switch over back to sharing screen and go to Susan's photos. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Um, glad to be here today. Um, I am, these are the two most recent our homes. Um, the, the one reader's favorite is currently on the newsstand and New Year New Look was the January, February issue. But um, one of the things that I wanted to say about what we're doing at our home, um, and this is actually, I guess, I had I celebrated my one year anniversary and about the time when I first had the control over the magazine as everybody went into quarantine. <laughs> and if there was ever a year where um, photographs provided by photographers like Gordon or um, designers who have had photographers take images of their work was important. It was this year, especially when we couldn't go into anybody's homes. I mean, last year at this time, I had the May, June issue, all I had all of the text and we had two photo shoots left to do and we were not able to do those photo shoots. So we had to start all over on those things, but Gordon helped us out with one project that he had already shot and another one of the photographers in town gave, helped us with another one. So I am I am always, and right now I'm not sure how long it will go on that you know we have to do all the social distancing. It'll probably be for a while. And I know that um, clients are sometimes hesitant to have a group of people coming in to their home, you know, and spending a day because if we are photographing a um, a, ho a home, even if we're doing may maybe the first floor and, and and main bedroom, that could take us all day, you know, from nine to four or five. So, you know, we do come with a big, a, not a huge entourage. We don't have a big staff, but there are at least three or four of us coming for every shot. Well, at least probably four. So, um, and one of the things that we do when we photograph things is we, we bring a stylist along and who visits the property beforehand and decides uh, what, and, and then collects flowers and other objects and accessories that maybe um, would help the photographs. So um, in terms of, I wanted to elaborate slightly on what um, Gordon said about the different types of photography, because I think that it's really important for you to know. And I, I have brought an example of something that I want to show you too. So um, this particular New England inspired room, uh, Gordon shot for Jennifer Stoner. This is provided photography. Jennifer had this photography done. Um, and when we were looking for a project, submitted it to us. Um, and it is a, it's a beautiful photograph. But what you can see is that the photos kind of draw you into the space um, and make you kind of want to look around some more. And, and that's because of the different, not only the angles and making sure you can feel what it would be like in there, but it is accessor accessorizing. I can tell you that we are not shy about moving people's furniture around when we go and shoot things. So if we didn't, you know, I was at a photo shoot on Thursday and uh, we were shooting their, their porch and the one little settee had its back to us. We flipped the furniture 
I mean, we actually took the move the chairs out of Dana Gibson's dining room when we um, photographed her house. So, you know, we are we do a lot of different things to make things look right in the photograph, um, moving things even over a smidge. I mean, it can take us over an hour to get a photo set up because we try to make sure that you can see all the elements and that it's not too busy in certain places where things are overlapping. So let's go through these and you can just see uh, these were all obvious uh, photographed by Gordon and they show different aspects of the home. Um, <clears throat> but all of the interior shots, like you can see the um, kitchen count, uh, island, it looks like they're gonna, about to have a party, you know, that kind of thing. So the rooms are accessorized to make you, give you a little idea of the personality of the people who live there. And also just to make them more warm and welcoming because they're pretty, a room can be pretty sterile if it's not, you know, done this way. So you could keep going through this, I think. So, cause I, so this is, again, these are photographs that Gordon took for Jennifer Stoner and they were kind enough to let us um, acquire them for the issue. And so you can see that now this is a little bit different. This um, article, th this was also shot by Gordon. Um, but this was with me. So this wasn't something that he was submitted separately and previously done. We we photographed this in, when did we do this, Gordon? Was it September? September, September yeah. So in this case, we basically moved all the furniture around in this tiny little house, I think, except for the piano, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so we set this table, but, you know, and I can tell you that even the little details about the way the spoons are set or the silverware is on, we look at all of those little details when before like deciding that we're, the shot is good. Um, and, and it seems like we're nitpicking, but it makes a big difference when you, when you see the photographs. So um, yeah, and this house is a, it, you can see it's a really teeny house. It's just two rooms on, on both floors, but there, this is like here, the, the cabinet, um, that he uses as a bar, that, that's a great kind of um, close-up shot of just that image. But you can get the, a sense of the depth of the room by the angle of it. Um, yeah, like in the um, room with the two Sheraton style settees, we, we removed wing chairs from the room um, because it was too crowded in the picture. Um, and, you know, flipped different things around, restyled the, you know, the mantles in the fireplaces and different things like that, just because we, you know, we wanted it to, to look like kind of an inviting thing during holiday time. And this was September on a kind of muggy rainy day. <laughs> so um, we can go next. And this, these are some of the other photos. Um, our, our intent is showing the design elements in the photographs. I mean, I love this fox at the end. I just think he's really fun. He doesn't have a name. I already checked, but, um, we were, we were, <laughs> but apparently the homeowner's uncle hit it on the side of the road and had it taxidermed because he thought it was so cute. I don't know, but he lives with his nephew. Anyway, we, we try to give a little bit of the personality of the owner in the photographs and, um, okay. So this is another set. This is completely another set. These were not taken by Gordon, the ones that I'm gonna show you. I, I included these and I had the permission of the designer who submitted them because they're, the project is a beautiful project. The photos are okay, but they're not photos for the magazine. So these photos, and I don't know who took them, but they were taken by someone who specializes in real estate photography. And the reason why I'm clarifying that, and Sherry, you can go through a little bit. So you can see there's not much in terms of styling on these things. And the reason is, is that real estate photography has a different goal. This is a little bit better. You know, it, it is definitely better, although we probably would have moved some things around to make it not look like a bowling alley, but, but it is still a beautiful room. The, the thing is, is that we could not use these photographs in our magazine because they're created to show a space. They're created without a lot of personality because they're meant to get other people to see like, oh, this is a blank palette and I can fill it with my stuff and my personality. So when people generally look at these rooms 
Um, they're looking at them more, you know, like this. I couldn't run that photograph. It, it, it shows a room, but it doesn't show me anything about the people that live there or the design elements. It's strictly to show you the room for real estate. And that's why um, one of the things that we wanted to make sure that you all, you know, that we said is that, I mean, real estate photographers can be good. I mean, these are nice photographs. I have nothing against them. They're just not for us. In this particular instance, the, while the back of that chair is beautiful, we would have rearranged the furniture so you could see further back into the space. Um, we also would have had accessories on the table. Um, so, you know, it, it's a totally different type of thing that you're trying to achieve with the photographs. And I know a lot of, I know there are a lot of photographers that are doing real estate photography now and that they think they can do the, the interiors. It's a different genre. And as I think also that Gary, Greg is going to tell you about for competition, because for the competition, like for the Nari competition, the photographs, um, and I can say that your photographs have gotten better in the last two years that I've worked on the magazine. But, you know, we, we, the photographs you want to present to this are kind of a combination of what you want from, from the Met, what you would want to present to a magazine, but also to show the elements of the architecture or the design or the special um, amenities of the, you know, your remodel. So there are a lot of different things that you're trying to approve with these photos. And, um, you know, I guess if I was going to take photos for Nari, I would try to make sure that some of them of the space, you know, were you, you know, were the type of thing that would appear in the magazine. You know, since we have been running the, you know, images of the winners, I don't even know how long it's been going on, but I, I've been with the magazine two years now and we've had them in, you know, the whole time I've been here. So um I guess that's probably, oh, the other thing I want to say is that if you can also send me like iPhone photos, you know, we are shooting things ourselves, you know, but as I said in the beginning, people still are kind of reticent to let people in their homes. So, you know, some people prefer it if their designer just takes care of photographing it, if they, if you have a good project. For us, if you, if you have a great project and you haven't photographed it and you think that it will fit within our, you know, editorial uh, coverage or interest, I'm okay with having you send me, you know, iPhone shots or whatever, but um, just knowing that they're not something that we can print from and that we would have to do a whole photo shoot in order to include it. Um, the other thing is, is that I'm, I don't always have to get a whole room, uh, you know, or a whole house. Um, in the magazine now, there are, we are, have added different sections. So there's a section about design that runs, it most has been running about them. In that we featured uh, shipping container homes. We featured a backyard studio built by a local architect. We're trying to show different, and we've also featured um, an octogenarian that's an amazing designer and has been, you know, an, a big influence on design here in Richmond, probably since he came here in the 60s. You know, so it, it, we're, we're looking at different things. In each issue at the end, there's a, a, a page called Great Spaces. And that's, you know, that can be like a cool wine cellar, a powder room, um, a neat, neat entryway, something that, you know, has that you, that's cool to look at, but maybe the rest of the house it isn't something that we would go shoot, but you have like one really cool space. I mean, we uh, we included a she sanctuary in there one um, a couple months ago, so they're different. And we also do kitchens in every issue, but for that kitchens, we we the kitchens need to look like they have you know the, the, their owner's personality, but we also need to see like the appliances and things like that, so that we can share that information with our readers. So anyway. Um, Anybody have any questions for anything? So, oh yeah. Do you prefer to have magazine ready photographs submitted versus having in your house? Um, Connie, it's, it really depends on the, like you guys and the owner of the house. I mean, I, I've had owners where in the past they said, okay, we could come in. And then now even, you know, more recently are still not ready to have other, you know, have us come in the house. So um, I, it's great for us to get the magazine ready photos, as long as they're, you know, 
done in a way that we can use them. We do pay the photographers for their usage, just so you know, even if you're supplying them, um, we check with every photographer to make sure that we have their rights. And when we run photos of your project, um, we have, we negotiate generally for the rights for three months, which would mean that you could not use those same photos from the photographer until the shelf life of the magazine was done. So, okay. Uh, yeah, you don't you you don't always own all of the rights to the photos. Your photographer, you have to look at your usage. So every photographer does things differently, but mostly the photographers give you rights to put it on your website and use it for your PR, you know, things. Um, I, I think if you have an exclusive right in yours, that's been questionable. We, we've run into issues. So we do check with a photographer every time because sometimes when uh, the designers have thought they have exclusive rights, they actually haven't had all of them. So we, we just double check, um, you know, cause we, we wanna be good to everyone in terms of that. And um, sometimes, yeah, I mean, a story behind the photos or the project is always interesting. Um, sometimes we'll write our article based on that. Um, and it's always good to know that. Oh, yeah, we do. Um, okay. I guess Taylor, that's your answer to everybody else. Okay. So Taylor had written that the photographer has to give you that in writing, but anyway. Um, even if you have it in writing, we've checked again because we've had people that were so sure they had the complete rights. And then when we check with the photographer, they said no. So, you know, it, it, it's, we take it on a case by case basis. And we, we, it's great if we don't have to pay for them, <laughs> you know, helps our budget, but, but you know, we, we do check. Um, let's see. So story ideas, um, if, if it's a cool story about the house, it's always helpful and it helps us get an idea of why you're submitting it. Like the, the, the uh, photographs that I showed you that were done by the um, real estate photographer, that is a, that's a cool um, story behind it. It's, a, it's an 18th century house that's been redone several times and, and over you know, the last couple hundred years to, and now it's been redone to make it look like a contemporary 21st century home. So you know, it, it does have some interesting story behind it and it's a lovely project. I would have to go shoot it. It, you know, if and when I want to use it. The other thing I wanted to make sure to let you know is that um, I think a lot of people also think if their projects run in our home that they won't be, won't have a chance to run them in a national magazine. And a lot of the designers in town are being picked, they're working all over the country, they're working in Iran globally, actually. And um, they, you know, so they, they've got this, they, they're being picked up by the national magazines, House Beautiful. I was just at the Greenbrier this past weekend for the Dorothy Draper weekend, which was very crazy cool. And, you know, um, there, I was there with House Beautiful, digital editor and a traditional home editor. And, you know, they're not going to, they're not going to discount your project if it's run in our home. A lot of times they find it. You know, they, uh, House Beautiful just named uh, Richmond designer Sarah Hillary as one of their up and coming new wave of designers in the country. So Richmond designers are starting to make their mark in a big time. It is good for you to have professional photographs that are well done because you, you have a, it does give you a leg up over maybe your competitors in terms of getting published. So anyway. Thank you, Susan. You had also said something about potentially having a list of ideas or things that are coming up in the next six months or year? Oh, right. And I, I'll send you, I, I thought I sent you that file, but I'll send it again. You know, we, I do have a, um, an editorial schedule for the rest of the year. I, I, it, it does seem to be, you know, like the, what I thought I was doing in July and August isn't going to happen, but <laughs> it will be something completely different. So, and, and it will be fun, but it just some Thing that kind of happened, you know, and um, so it, it isn't always going to be what we say in the what we intend to do in the beginning of the year, but but that is also dependent on the projects that we find out about, 
for instance, the, like the, the issue I'm working on now, I originally wanted to have kind of unconventional buildings, you know, unconventional homes. And then I realized, then I realized I wasn't getting anywhere. You know, people were sending me pictures of old churches and then there was nothing inside or things like that, you know, so it wasn't something that I could run. Then I realized, okay, it could be what was in the interior and I had, to, and the issue is still evolving and it's different, you know, then uh, it, it is that the features are totally different than I originally envisioned. So um, I, it, a lot of that depends on what we've heard from and found out about from you guys. So, and I loved information. I, it's great to have projects and I will send Sherry the um, editorial list as it stands now and um, it gives you an idea, but we worked over three months ahead. So right now we're um, in the middle of our May, June issue and it will go to press in like April 12th and um, and then we'll be on the summer issue so we you know I if you have anything for the summer that you think people might like to know about um, I as I said it's still evolving but I will definitely be looking for great spaces and kitchens and things like that and you know always always looking for you know inf new information um, also I'm trying to build a database of designers and architects and builders in Richmond. So if you'd like me to add you to it, please email me at susanm at richmag.com. And that way I can send you out. I try to send notices when I'm working on things to the people I know, you know, that I've met or discovered. <laughs> and right now I have a database of over 60 designers in Richmond that I've been putting together. So I, you know, I'd love to add everybody to that so I can find out what you're working on. Lovely. I'm going to add your add your email address, but I will also forward um, Gordon and Susan and Greg's information to everyone and that list that Susan's talking about. So you will have that as a follow up as well. Okay. Sorry, so, I took so much time. No, 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 you're great. Thank you for all the information. That was that was wonderful. Now, Greg, if you will send us into competition mode. Please. <laughs> Yes, well, thank you, and I, I really appreciate the uh, visuals that everybody's supplying because um, there is a difference between photography for magazine work or selling a home or, let's say, um, showing uh, an architectural remodel job mm -hmm. that um, has different bones and different purposes. Um, when I'm photographing a job, I'm thinking about all three uh, uses for the photographs. And I know the builder, he just wants pictures so he can submit for, let's just say, the Cody Awards. Well, those pictures can be kind of plain and simple compared to something that's styled that's going to have a lot more longevity uh, and life on a website or perhaps used in a magazine. And I like to get maybe a couple different versions. And magazines love verticals and squares. Uh, websites, they, they like horizontal pictures because most of our monitors are this way. And I'm always thinking about details, um, you know, a corbel or some light fixture. And some of that comes back to a house. And if you have pictures uh, that are on house or for your company, you're going to have uh, consumers or potential customers looking at your pictures, tagging the things and then asking you questions, where did that light fixture come from? Um, and trends are very uh, uh, important. They're evolving and they're you know, currently we're into outdoor mode. So people want to go to outdoor living and, and what's been trending over the last couple of years um, is super hot now in, you know, outdoor heaters and TVs that specialize um, and that can be viewed outside and people are putting their money where they can enjoy it the most. But for the, getting back to just the, you know, elements of, of entering a contract of the year awards submission or other design build contests. Um, I try to make sure that my clients are fully aware before they start the project that this might be an award-winning project. Get lots of before pictures from every conceivable angle so that you have a better chance of giving an, a matching after picture. And those are the kind of things that really can tell a judge or a, a prospective client, let's say, this is what you dreamed up or this is what the homeowner had in mind and these are the solutions you came up with. Uh, and I think contractors need to tooth their own horn uh, because homeowners, they might have a, a very rough sketch of what they want. It's up to the contractor to 
to pull out something a little extra. And that doesn't mean save a little bit of money necessarily. It just means come up with a better solution workflow. And that comes down to asking the homeowner a lot of questions. How are you going to use the space? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Um, are you going to sell the house? Or is this going to be your forever house? Um, so going into projects, before and after plans are really important as well for a submission. And um, I think that the photographer needs to educate the client, meaning the builder, that we need all these things. Um, and I want to see the before plans. I want to, I, I obviously I'll see the after, but showing the flow, showing the scope of work, showing the scale is a lot of what the judges are looking for. In the contract of the year awards submission, there's six criteria that are scored, if you will. And uh, we, as a chapter airing Metro DC years ago, decided well, let's make it really easy for our submissions. And we have then fill out and answer these six questions. Um, and the judges are scoring on those very six things. So if you answer them well, you're gonna score higher. And one of the questions was always, you know, did you have any, um, let's say obstacles that you had to overcome? And if it's just a rip and replace kitchen, well, maybe not. Well, address that, just, you know, don't leave it blank. Um, the other thing, getting back to pictures for multiple uses, um, I think it's really important to think about photographing the, the, the space, let's say, maybe a little bit more plain and simple as you start, build and add texture and fruit and flowers and interest of color, you want people to draw their eye into very specific spots. Obviously, I like to shoot wide and then I, you know, I go in zoom, zoom, zoom. And I'm always thinking about how the picture can be cropped more easily for other uses. And so some of my clients now have me shoot a lot of the kitchen spaces almost empty because they know they have other applications besides, let's say, the website and magazine. So yes, I bring props, we bring props, we use what's there. The struggle is sometimes you have to go in and shoot a house that's empty. And I have to admit that's a, that's a killer. So I try to bring stuff, at least for the bathroom, towels and bowls and stuff for the kitchen and think ahead. You know, what can we bring that, you know, will make sense? And you just, I would not recommend shooting a space with no furniture. It's just, there's no scale. Um, Obviously, you can get away with it in certain applications, maybe a pool or something, but it really pays to maybe wait, <clears throat> just wait for the next year, have them fill it out, put some artwork on the walls. Are they gonna get draperies? <coughs> and one of the problems people are having right now still is their furniture is on a boat in you know, customs uh, for six months. So maybe you have to bring something from another house. You know, the homeowner is gonna have to well, hopefully understand that, you know, that's not their intended design elements, but you can't, I, I don't like to shoot islands with no chairs if they're intended for people to sit there. That doesn't mean, <clears throat> pardon me, that doesn't mean we don't take the chairs away for some pictures so you can see behind and everything, open up the doors, like to see what's inside the cabinets, um, like to show a little bit of element of what the homeowner intended for that custom kitchen. Why did they put, you know, $100,000 into these uh, cabinets and then hide everything away. Well, inside the cabinets is all the good stuff sometimes. All these hidden little niches for you know charging phones and hiding away things that they don't want to see all the time. And you know, inside that little, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, breakfast cabinet is the coffee maker and all these things that are there and then you close it up. So those are things that I think are important to show and I think the homeowners always have some hidden um, element that they asked for that the contractor had not done before. And uh, those are unique to each project. Um, I think it's important for the contractors to think about the homeowner's needs and how did they go above and beyond those needs to supply and give a job that um, and design, design solutions that were not something that were on the table in the beginning. And it's great to get testimonials from your homeowners thanking you for this great job. But if they can describe it in a way that um, is personal, that has a lot more weight for the judges and for your website and for your other promotional pieces, because 
ultimately you just did a great job for XYZ client and they might come back in 10 years, but you're looking to get new clients based on how good you are as a contractor. <clears throat> and um, it's okay to have material ready to go to put out on house and LinkedIn and Facebook that just shows what you did and how happy everybody is. And yes, by the way, we did win an award. And by the way, it's gonna be published in so-and-so magazine and um, all these things can lend itself to traction over the years. And um, I, uh, one of the examples I like to give is uh, when I joined Nary in 1995, I quickly started to meet uh, contractors that were just a little bit older than me or my age, all starting out kind of new and fresh. And um, Chris Landis and Ethan Landis were two brothers. Chris came from the commercial side and uh, in, in architecture and Ethan was doing remodeling. And Ethan said, hey, this is more fun. Why don't you come join me? And it was basically the two guys in a truck, 1996. Um, and I've watched and helped Chris and Ethan grow their business into one of the biggest remodelers in the nation uh, with 50 employees now here in DC. And one of the common things that we have done as a team almost, take pictures of the good projects, show the good projects, get the good projects published, enter contests, be a judge yourself so you understand you know, how, how the judges think. And Chris is now considered one of the experts in the field and people come to him from all over the country for advice mm -hmm. on a remodeling and judging. And um, he uh, years ago took it upon himself to take pictures, have somebody in his office write up a story. Then when the Washington Post would call and say, hey, we're doing a story on blah, 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 outdoor kitchens. He already had something in the can. He sent it over. They don't have to look any further. The pictures are great. The story was even written. Now they're going to modify that. But, you know, for some of these smaller publications around town, they love when you just like feed them something that's ready to go. And if it's digital and ready to pop on the, you know, their Facebook page or something, why would they reject it if and go look for something that they don't know what it is yet? So having these things ready to go is really, I think, uh, forward thinking and if you have the pictures, you might as well put a story together. Together, um, One of the people on the call today is Linda Barrett with Schroeder Design Build. And she's a local uh, marketing person for their company. And she did basically just that, uh, took the pictures that we shot and put a story together. And then Viva Tyson's magazine ran the, um, ran the piece pretty much. So it's an endless um, way to utilize the pictures that you have um, in, a myriad of, of situations that'll benefit your company. Um, just entering the Cody Awards is just one small part of that. And one of the things that we've done um, or helped Nary National do is if you enter the portal for the Contract of the Year Awards, you can hit a little button at the bottom of the page and pay another $175 and have your uh, entry that you just put together go to Chris List and Qualified Remodeler or Nary National's platform. And you know, one stop, you've done everything once and you've entered three contests. So I wouldn't, you know, just look local. Um, and obviously one of the things that always amazed me here in the DC area, we would have people not win a local NARI award, but win a national NARI award. So um, there's a lot of competition here in the DC area. Uh, the other thing I would, I, I would highly stress is, you know, each of these design build contests has the, a unique category or a unique sort of something that they only offer outdoor kitchens, landscape architecture, uh, universal design, creative solutions. And you might have something that just fits that their category perfectly that you didn't weren't aware of unless you've really paid attention to all the different categories. And, and maybe not this year, but next year or the next year, you have that thing that you've been wanting to do. Um, or enter, and um, it might not come around for four or five more years. So my suggestion is take pictures of your good stuff and take pictures of the things that you want to do more of. And uh, once the pictures are in the can or the, you have, you know, that, what do you call that, the visual, you can use it for years and years and years, particularly if it's something that's, um, you know, until maybe seven years from now and 
someone's come up with a new counter surface that we haven't thought of. But um, most pictures have a, a five to seven year shelf life where they look fresh. And um, I could go on and on about other elements of how to use you know, your marketing on social media. Uh, I will mention one thing that came up recently. It's a Facebook page here in the Northern Virginia area of DC. It's called Renovate Ready. Um, as contractors, you can join and pay a small fee and basically promote your business um, and reach customers uh, that way. And you can put, put content up and they're always asking for recommendations and that sort of thing. So, but what drives that? Well, it's pictures. So think about that. Um, I'll, I don't know, I could go on, but I, maybe it's time to take a, any, a question or two. I don't know if anybody- There are, a couple, there are a couple of questions. Amy wanted to know, what do you recommend for the before picture when it's a wall? Well, so yes, um, if you're gonna tear down a wall or the wall's not gonna be there, I think it's good to take those pictures. Obviously, some of the before pictures, there's not gonna be an after picture that matches. And that's okay too, that's, where, that's what plans are for. But take as many before pictures as possible and they can be pretty bad actually. You know, you can always make them brighter or add a little bit of contrast, but it, hopefully your after pictures are way better than your before pictures. <laughs> and um, Taylor wanted to ask, what lens do you like to use? 50 millimeter, uh, 50, is it millimeter? And I can answer that. 35? I like Gordon so, answer that too. So I, I shoot uh, with a full frame camera, which means uh, it's not a cropped sensor. I primarily shoot with a 16 to 35 zoom lens. It's nice to be able to place the camera someplace and not have to move around every time I want to zoom in. I have a tw uh, 11 to 22, which I use sparingly, but for bathrooms, it's great. It's super wide. Um, it's not a fisheye. Um, I think if I were doing more specific work for magazines, I would probably be more at the 35 to 75 range where you're going tighter into the scene. Um, I tend to shoot a little bit on the wide side because I can always zoom in and crop it. But I'm looking for details all the time. So I use all my lenses. What about you, Gordon? Uh, I use a 24 and a 50. Um, and the 24, and I can also zoom in with those um, lenses via the camera. Um, and sometimes I'll do that. So I'll turn my 24 into like a 36 or something like that. Um, so um, I try to use the 50 because it doesn't distort uh, at all. And so the 24, you know, sometimes distorts a little bit. Um, so I try to use the 50 when I can, but sometimes you just can't back up, you know? Right. <laughs> So, um, yeah. Does anyone have any questions? You're welcome to unmute and ask or put them in the chat. Also, yes. I want to mention um, Angela Hubbard and uh, Debbie Kane are on here with Metro DC Nary's chapter. And they, you guys did a, a, a Cody after seminar online recently where you told people what to do with their photos and things after they win a Cody. Would you mind if we shared that link with our members as well? Absolutely, that'd be great. Um, we had a panel discussion. We had one first time Cody award winner. Um, we had some uh, <clears throat> firms from our association who had won and one uh, person on the panel had been doing Cody's for 17 years. So they kind of shared um, what they do to market their Cody awards. So it's a great, we have a, a YouTube channel uh, like, like Central Virginia does and I'll, I'll share that link. Okay, great, thank you. And thank you, Debbie. One thing I would like to add that I, I missed in my um, spiel earlier is that if you're going to photograph uh, a remodeling project for a potential design build awards, you want to shoot as many views as you can that show the flow and where you added space and where you altered doorways and windows. And okay, they might not be exciting, award winning, you know, magazine worthy pictures, but for the judges, they're invaluable. And also when you as a contractor are pitching um, a job to a potential client, 
having all those different viewpoints and angles helps the homeowner put their head around what you could do to their space. People have a really hard time visualizing the after and where their you know, $150,000 is gonna go. True. Um, Susan, I know with um, our Cody Awards this year, we did have a couple of issues with the high res photos. Is there some suggestion that you can give the people that actually know about photography, and I'm unfortunately one of them, what number it is you're looking for, or what format it is that you specifically right. are looking well, for? Well, I guess I think part of the confusion was that some of, I guess there are two places for photos in the application. I may be wrong, so, yes. but some of the photos came in and they had the contributors' logos on them, and right. some of them didn't. Um, for us to be able to run them, and we and and we have been, I mean, we we ran the winners of the Cody in the it's in the January issue this year of the 2020 Cody Award winners, and um, we ran into situations where people had only submitted photographs with their logo on them, um, and and also photographs were that were low resolution, and by resolution, I guess it's the pixels per inch. The photographers can. Uh, correct me about that. But in order to print them in the magazine, and because we are a print magazine, we do a lot on, we do have digital things, but we're going for print in our magazine. We need to have an image that is probably a minimum of five by seven at 300 DPI. I know, Gordon, what, what size are your photographs usually? Um, well, so one thing too is the size that I shoot at is is it's pretty large file mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of times my clients are mostly using the jpegs you know mm -hmm. from, uh, website and um, social media and that kind of thing so I have the j the I have the tiff that's the high res uh, version for print Mm -hmm. And then I also have the JPEG, which I make, I make a JPEG from the TIFF. Um, and the JPEGs are mostly what my clients use. And then I give the TIFFs to a magazine if the project's going to be published. Yeah. And, and we've uh, run into, and, we've run into, sorry to interrupt. I apologize. Oh, that's okay. We've run into issues over the last couple of years that I've been on the magazine staff that um, not all of the photographs that have been submitted to the NARI are JPEGs or TIFFs. Um, and not all of them are high resolution. So we've, we have found a number in the last couple of years that we were not able to use. And we've had to go back and forth with the um, contractor who submitted them or designer to try and get a larger file that's better for us to print. And we need them even if the photographs are not a whole page. You know, So it is important that, that we get the right resolution on that. And, um, and the right kind of files. Yeah, I think and, should, and I'm sorry. The yeah. only other thing is, is that a lot. Sometimes people put them in like a PowerPoint. I can't pull those photos out of the PowerPoint. We have to actually have the original JPEG or TIFF files. I think some of these photos that are professional are so the quality is so great that when they send them to us, we can't even open them because the files are too big. So we have we're going to be switching over to the national platform this year, but. It, I think that's always kind of a, an issue that we have to work on. So Angela, did you have something you wanted to say real quick about photos? I was just going to add same thing that you said with the um, national has a, a platform for Cody entries and Sherry is working to set your chapter up with that right now. And the great thing about that is it, it has um, a specific upload. So you have, you can upload up to 20 photographs and the, those photographs are only meant to be used for marketing the project. It's not, those aren't seen by the judges. So you'll upload your PowerPoint with those things in there showing the, the before right next to an after picture and helping those judges see the, the project. But then it will ask you for specific photos. So you're asked to give um, the first one is your wow shot, like your favorite picture of this project that you would want to be um, in the magazine or that that wow shot in your uh, presentation. You're then asked to give a before shot. And most, the, you know, most effective would be that before of the wow, you know, that same view. Then you're asked for your company logo, and then the rest of them can just be 
any mixture of photos and you're you're going to be required to submit 10 photos in that platform or in that portal if you don't have 10 just duplicate one of those photos so um but you're going to love having that because it'll make sherry's life easier it'll make your life easier it'll make the magazine's life easier awesome can i can i add one more thing of course so so um i know that we're Take, keeping everybody from going back to work. But in terms of what you're filling out, kind of to pick up on what Greg said about talking about the interesting details or something that was unusual or whatever, that actually helps us too. Because we have one writer that interviews, um, well, well, that works on every one of those uh, that writes up every one of the little blurbs on, on the winning projects. And the more or better information that we have about the projects, the more effective the paragraph is going to be. And, you know, the way that the timing has been, and I, I'm hoping that you guys are going to keep it so we do them in January again, because I do like it as the beginning of the year better than at Christmas time. But, um, but I think that we don't have enough, the way that our schedules work, we can't interview every single winner if we wait until you guys are told you're winners. It's, it just doesn't run in. So we can't stop and interview you. So we are dependent on your entry forms and what you've written to know what's interesting about the project. So I think what Greg said about filling all of that stuff out and making sure that you talk about any interesting details, that part is, is important, especially for us in terms of of your of Nari Central Virginia and, and being put into our home as a winner. So and I think also to try to help with that, Susan, we want to add in a section of what would you want the magazine to know mm -hmm. or to say that would be great. Yeah. And that will hopefully help that as well. Yeah. Well no, it's 103. I appreciate everyone's time so much, especially Susan Gorgon Gor Gordon. Sorry, Gordon. <laughs> Susan Gordon Gregory and Greg Hadley. Um, I really appreciate the hard work that you guys have put into this and also the partnership that we have with Our Home Magazine and Susan. It really makes our Cody program so much richer and we appreciate it so much. So I will send out this recording to everyone. I'll send out contact information to everyone and thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone for tuning in. Anybody has any questions, they can find me and reach me and ask me later. Thank you.